Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode in our configuration management series. Today we are diving into the CM9 control, also known as the configuration management plan. Your support means a lot to us and the easiest way to help grow our community is by subscribing to the channel if you have not done so already. Also be sure to smash the like button and click on the notification bell so you never miss an update when I upload a new video. Thank you for your continued support and let's get started. Configuration Management Plan This control is to document how configuration management activities are performed, including configuration, identification, change control, and configuration status. Identifying individuals or teams responsible for configuration management activity. It also is used to specifying items such as hardware, software, documentation, and other deliverables that are placed under configuration management. The content and detail of the configuration management plan depend on the complexity of the information system and the security categorization of the system. Now, moving on. The objective of the CM9 is to ensure that changes to the information system are properly managed and controlled to maintain the integrity and the security of the system throughout its life cycle. By implementing a configuration management plan, Organization can effectively manage the configuration of their system, reducing the risk of unauthorized or incorrect changes that could compromise the system security. The configuration management plan, the CM9, is actually selected for just the three high baseline for the 853 RFI, that is the moderate and the high baseline. It is not selected for the low baseline. Now, let's read the control requirement explanation for CM9 in 853 Revision 5. CM9, the control, it says, develop, document, and implement a configuration management plan for the system that A, addresses roles, responsibility, and configuration management processes and procedures. B, establishes a process for identifying configuration items throughout the system development lifecycle and for managing the configuration of the configuration items. C. Define the configuration items for the system and places the configuration items under the configuration management. And D. Is reviewed and approved by assignment organization defined personnel or role. And finally, protect the configuration management plan from unauthorized disclosure and modification. Now let's look at the discussion, which is the everyday English explanation of the control. It says configuration management activity occur throughout the system development life cycle. As such, there are developmental configuration management activity, example, the control of the code and the software libraries, and the operational configuration management activity, example, control of install component and how the component are configured. Configuration management plan satisfy the requirement in configuration management policies while being tailored to individual systems. Configuration management plan define processes and procedures for how configuration management is used to support system development lifecycle activity. Configuration management plans are generated during the development and acquisition stage of the system development lifecycle. The plans describe how to advance changes through change management process, update configuration settings and baseline, maintain component inventory, controlled environment, test and operational environment and develop, release and update key document. Organization can employ template to help ensure the consistent and timely development and implementation of configuration management plan. Template can represent a configuration management plan for the organization with subsets of the plan implemented on a system by system basis. Configuration management approval process include the designation of key stakeholders responsible for reviewing and approving proposed changes to systems and personnel who conduct security and privacy impact analysis prior to the implementation of changes to the system. Configuration items are the system component, such as the hardware, software, firmware, and documentation to be configuration managed. 
as systems continue to the system development life cycle, new configuration items may be identified and some existing configuration items may no longer need to be under the configuration control. Now, this control, the CM9 has only one control enhancement, which is the assignment of responsibility. That is, assign responsibility for developing the configuration management process to organizational personnel that are not directly involved in the system development activity. Now, let's look at some important and benefit of configuration management plan. Maintaining a good configuration management plan helps organization ensure that systems operate consistently and securely by maintaining control over changes made to the configuration. It also helps organization comply with regulatory requirement and industry standard, ensuring that all changes are documented, authorized, and traceable. It provides a structured approach to managing changes, ensuring that all changes are reviewed, tested, and approved before implementation. And finally, by implementing CM9 configuration management, organization can achieve a higher level of control over their IT environment, leading to improved security, reliability, and operational efficiency. All right, now let's look at the control assessment approach. To ensure the proper implementation and the optimal performance of this CM9 control, addressing both the design and operational effectiveness, we take the following steps. All right, so obtain and examine the organization's policy and procedure, the dash one control related to configuration management to ensure these documents outline the process for developing, documenting, updating, and reviewing the configuration management plan, that is the CMP, and also obtain the SSP as well, that is the system security plan. Now, you have to also interview the personnel or the stakeholders, that is conduct interview with the personnel responsible for configuration management and the plan creation. Review the configuration management plan for a section that is, or for the sections that are covering the roles and responsibilities, a section defining a configuration item under the SDLC, and also the section establishing how to identify configuration items under the SDLC. And also, don't forget to review the, uh, the document for updates you know, uh, the update frequency and whatnot, because those review and the, uh, 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 those reviews are very important. You have to make sure that the configuration management plan is up to date and has been reviewed for currency and so on and so forth. All right, that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, share, and comment to help more people discover these videos. The YouTube algorithm will treat this video very good if you do the sharing, the subscribing, and the commenting so we can engage. And also, your support in that regard can make a big difference. Thank you and stay tuned for our next episode, which is going to be on CM10, the software usage restriction. See you next time. Thank you.